Meguiar's presents Car Crazy, the show that focuses on the people behind the cars. Most kids like to play with cars, but for some, it becomes an obsession. This type of person, and there are millions of us, have an unusual preoccupation with cars. And sometimes it is not at all rational. Indeed, we are talking about people of all ages and all walks of life who are certifiably car crazy. Hi, I'm Barry McGuire, and I've spent my entire life working and associated with people who are crazy about their cars. This show is intended to gain insight into these people and understand why they are so car crazy. It's been called a contagious disease, and we hope this show will help you catch the bug, if you haven't already. Once again, it's time to celebrate the Collector Car Hobbies Person of the Year Award. And this time, we've moved to the world-famous Dorothy Chandler Pavilion at the Music Center in Los Angeles, former home of the Oscars, to accommodate the throngs of car guys who want to be a part of this year's celebration of the car hobby. More than 2,500 people have come to honor the father of vintage racing, Mr. Steve Earle, as the Person of the Year for the Collector Car Hobby. We'll also be honoring as treasures of the hobby, Wally Parks for his enormous influence on hot rodding, and Bill Hara, the most famous car collector of all time. More than $12 million worth of the cars are here on the plaza, in the lobby, and on stage where the Beach Boys will be in concert paying tribute to Steve Earle and the collector car hobby tonight. We'll tell you more about the McGuire's Award right after this break. The McGuire's Award was created to honor those individuals whose personal efforts have significantly impacted the quality, visibility, and growth of the collector car hobby. There are over 25 million of us across America who attend thousands of Car Guy events every year. The reason we created Car Crazy Television was to share the passion of those behind the cars with all of you, to better understand this emotional attachment that we all have with cars, and to spread the incurable disease of car craziness. The McGuire's Award was created to honor the best of the best. The honoree is selected each year by an independent panel of the most prestigious automotive journalists in America, representing top automotive publications such as Automobile Magazine, Motor Trend, and Hemmings. Some have even been guests right here on Car Crazy, including legendary journalist David E. Davis, founder of Automobile Magazine, Denise McCluggage, who's done it all and written about it, and Brock Yates, author extraordinaire and creator of the Cannonball Run. We're so proud of their brilliant choices and all of our esteemed past recipients. The first year, we honor Chet Krause, whose Krause Publications is the world's largest publisher of Leisure Time magazines and books, including Old Cars magazine that debuted way back in the early 70s. Then in 1996, Chip Miller and Bill Miller were honored together for founding Carlisle Events that host 10 major collector car, truck, and motorcycle events every year that attract more than 500,000 car crazy people. In 1997, Jay Leno took home the award as one of the most visible enthusiasts who constantly supports events all over and whose night job supports his passion for cars. We honored Jules Human and the late Lauren Tryon in 1998 for making the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance the premier Concours event in the world and a model for all others to follow. 1999 honoree Bruce Meyer is the most tireless supporter I know for every facet of the collector car hobby, and he sits on the board of numerous charitable associations, including co-chair of the Peterson Automotive Museum and serves as president of the car club I most love, the Checkered Flag 200. The following year, we honored Robert Peterson, the founder of Hot Rod and Motor Trend Magazine's Peterson Publications. He and his wife Margie have given us the fabulous Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, dedicated to studying the automobile's influence on our lives and our culture. The 2001 recipient was none other than J.B. Nethercutt, whose Nethercutt collection is one of the largest and most prestigious in the world, setting the standard for restoration. He has bequeathed a fortune to preserve the collection to keep it open to the public free of charge so that the beauty of the vehicles may be enjoyed and shared forever. Last year's recipient, Bill Warner, is the founder and organizer of the Amelia Island Concord d'Elegance in Jacksonville, Florida. And he's raised millions of dollars for charity while introducing the world of collector cars to millions of people in the Southeast. 
This year's honoree is none other than Steve Earle, the father of the vintage racing movement in the United States, best known for organizing the Monterey Historic Automobile Races. His philosophy is that great race cars should keep doing what they were designed to do, race. While there are so many people in the hobby that deserve to be honored, only one can be named the person of the year. So a few years ago, we decided to recognize others as treasures of the hobby. Past treasures have included Don Summer, co-founder of the Meadowbrook Concord, Tom Sparks, famous restorer, well-known in Hollywood for his movie cars, David Holes, the GM designer best remembered for those late 50s Cadillac fins, George Barris, the king of customs, Bobby Dean Rhoda, who has written and photographed about almost every car vet you can imagine, and Terry Eric, who made Hemmings Motor News the virtual Bible of the hobby. This year, we pay tribute to Wally Parks, the godfather of hot rodding, for having the foresight to open the NHRA Museum, preserving historically important race cars and automobilia. We also honor Bill Hare posthumously, who once had the largest car collection in the world. At the beginning, the McGuire's Award was held at the Peterson Automotive Museum. But as our guest list grew and we needed more space, we moved the ceremony to the famed Beverly Hills Hotel. Now in our ninth year, with over 2,500 names on our guest list, we needed something even larger. Because the celebration is often referred to as the Oscars of the collector car hobby, what better venue to hold the show than the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion at the Music Center in Los Angeles, where the Oscars were held for many years. It's not often I get to interview my wife on Car Crazy. This is Karen. 40 years we've been doing this car guy thing. What do you think? 40 years. It's been awesome. <laughs> awesome. It's taken me to roads I've never dreamed of being on. <laughs> Did you ever think we'd be at the Dorothy Chandler no, Pavilion with no. this event? Unbelievable, it's huh? incredible. I am so excited. The people we've honored and so many people we want to honor in the years ahead are so very special. Well, car people are the best people in the world. They really are. They're so friendly and outgoing and lovable. Stay with us. When we return, we'll learn more about the 2003 Person of the Year for the Clutter Car Hobby, Mr. Steve Earle. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. In 1974, for a weekend of fun, Steve Earle and a group of friends began an incredible journey with just 60 participants racing vintage automobiles on the track at Laguna Seca. Today, there are 375 participants and the event is run just like a Grand Prix. Some might say even better. His original goal of preserving these beautiful and historic cars for the purpose in which they are originally intended to be used and to celebrate and share their histories has never wavered from day one. That's why our prestigious selection committee chaired by Ken Gross has chosen Steve Earle, father of the vintage racing move in the United States, as the 2003 recipient of the McGuire's Collector Car Hobbies Person of the Year. My good oh, friend no, and sometimes co-host Bruce Meyer and I asked some of our guests about this year's honoree. The second most important man on the premises after Steve Earle is Ken Gross, the chairman of our McGuire's Award Selection Committee. And Ken, you did another great job this year. Man. Thanks, Barry. Kind of you to say. This is, this is a great group you chair. Well, we have a, a wonderful group of editors. And you know, this is the only time in the year, we're, we're normally competitors, that we get to work together. And it's a lot of fun. These guys learn a lot about one another in a competitive way that they wouldn't be able to do if it weren't for the award. Tell me a little bit about how you feel the McGuire's Award and the racing and Steve Earl all come together. Well, it's, it's a culmination of passion, excitement, and talent. And Steve Earl has really shown all of that. He's a wonderful promoter, puts on a, the best events in the, in the country, by far the best events. And to have McGuire's honor him and appreciate that talent and that effort is really exciting. Even just to be here is an absolute honor. You're a vintage racer, you're a collector, you put on the Amelia Island Concours, but let's talk about vintage racing for a moment because you love to get out there and race these cars. Talk about Steve Earle and what he's done for the hobby. What he's done is maintain an integrity in the vintage cars. Uh, there's, there's so many bogus cars out there. You know, a car has to have had history and has to have been a, a really well-prepared car and represent its time period, and that's important, maintaining the integrity of it because uh, otherwise they, they become some sort of an aberration, and he brings class to the whole operation. The honoree tonight is Steve Earle, who's a dear friend of yours. Steve, uh, Steve very much deserves this award. I, I couldn't be happier about it. Being a close friend just like you when you got the award, Bruce, uh, you know, makes me very proud to be associated with guys like you. 
Talk about Steve Earle for just a second. What can you say about this man? Oh, well, uh, he's a pillar of the car community. If you, if you look at his career and what he's done to, I mean, just in general for the car world, but to make vintage racing not only a safe, but an enjoyable part of the hobby is, is so important. And, and you know, for, I hate to think like the insurance guy again, <laughs> but that safety thing, you know, you think about a million dollar cars roaring yeah, around on the track, yeah. not easy to do, but he's managed to do it successfully. And uh, it's just fun to watch. We, we, you know, we're just thrilled that uh, he's the man of the year. In a way, Pebble Beach is more like the Super Bowl or the Kentucky Derby, but tonight, the McGuire's Award really is like the Oscars of the car world. I mean, what a great honor for Steve. What can you say about Steve Earle? Oh, Steve Earle, I love him. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thanks for everything you've given us. Uh, I've never participated by driving at Laguna Seca, but I've been there several times. My wife and I have been there several times. Uh, he rolled out the carpet for us this year in the 50th anniversary of the Corvette. Love the guy and really happy. He's one of our brothers here with the McGuire's Award. What can you say about this man that hasn't already been said? Well, you know, what he's done is he, he's, he's allowed the guys that love cars that either never had a chance to race or raced like I did for a number of years to continue to play with the cars. And uh, I think that everybody that's ever been in a race car has never lost that passion to drive it as long as they can stand on two feet or not stand on two feet. I mean, and, and Steve really has made that, you know, given everybody an opportunity to do that by, by you know, causing everybody to preserve the cars, you know, forming a venue and a place to race the cars and uh, respect each other with the cars and have some great fun. This car goes fast. Talk about how fast. Well, you know, when they built these cars, at the time it was the fastest car ever built as a sports car and it's pretty much maintained that status. You know, the times, it was 0 to 100 in 2.9 seconds and 0 to 150 in 5.7 and 0 to 212. And, and at 200, it's spinning the tires when you get the fourth gear. So it's a pretty amazing sports car for its age and everything. Don't leave now. We're going to look at some of the fabulous cars on the plaza and talk to more of our car crazy guests when McGuire's Car Crazy returns. Welcome back. At the 2003 McGuire's Award, on the plaza and in the lobby of the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion at the Music Center in Los Angeles, one could see anything from Tim Allen's famous nickel car to a custom lowrider, a vintage race car, a Los Angeles fire truck, a GT40 Mark III, and everything in between. The cars on the plaza represented all facets of the collector car hobby. My buddy and sometime co-host Bruce Meyer and I talked to more of our guests before the show and we took a look at some of these fabulous cars. John Kuhn's 1962 Plymouth Savoy with its 413 Max Wedge Superstock motor would make a fine addition to any muscle car collection. I had a, a 1928 Essex, which is a very unusual car, and I took it down to a place in Anaheim to sell on consignment. And when I walked in there, I happened to have seen this car, and I uh, instantly fell in love with it. It's the absolute muscle car. This was actually right at the very beginning of the muscle car era. It's a, truly an honor to have the car here to, to be selected because, you know, they could have picked any cars they wanted. The car hobby is about cars, but it's a lot about people. Well, cars are really an excuse for people who feel the same way to come together. And you'll see tonight, two and a half thousand people who all love cars. This is an excuse for us to all see our good friends and have a great time. When you think of beautiful books, you think of Dennis Adler, who's here today, and I know you've done a book for Barry as well. I did a book with Barry of The Art of the Automobile, which came out a couple of years ago, The 100 Greatest Cars. And most of the cars actually were uh, finished off of McGuire's Wax for the photo session, so it kind of worked out pretty well. You look great. Now, do you use McGuire products on your hair? I do. I, I use the, uh, the Quick Detailer. It looks fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> A shining example of a beautiful collector car is John Peelman's 1947 Ford convertible custom street rod. I received a phone call a couple of months ago and asked if I would uh, bring it down here and I felt privileged to uh, be involved with the company and come on down and, and see what it's all about. And it's really neat. It's a full custom street rod. Very subtle body modifications, but if a person knows the fat fender era, he'll realize all the body mods that are on that car. We took the body lines off the fenders and ran them all the way around the car. Uh, shortened the deck lid, we made a full electronic uh, deck lid and hood on the car. Has a full sliding convertible top that the back seat folds down and the top comes out and attaches. It's a uh, full functioning, full riding, nice piece. What do you think of the Meguiar's Award bringing the people together? This is wonderful, bringing everybody together. I mean, when it comes to wheels, like I told President Clinton a long time ago, when it comes to wheel, the ex-president, 
when it comes to wheels, there's no generation gap. There's no rich or poor, male or female, white, black, brown, and yellow. Just everybody, all parts of society. And so this is, this is just wonderful, everybody coming together. It's like a reunion. One of the first cars our guests saw as they arrived was Charlie Lampetecchio's 1936 Ford Roadster, representing the creme de la creme of custom street rides. It's a 1936 Ford Roadster. It's been modified a whole bunch. I would call it a street rod, a custom street rod. I bought it out of a garage that was in Watsonville, California. It's been in storage for about 35 years. I've been in cars all my life. I love street rods. I've been a hot rod crazy guy all the time. And I just always liked 36 Ford Roadsters, so I finally found one and started doing this. George, this being the Academy Awards of automotive enthusiasts, you've been to Academy Awards for cars now, for people, and for movie stars. Tell us how that all fits into the Barris world. Well, the fact that McGuire has been able to bring this for us, and friends like you, the MCR shows that make it a major family thing that we are able to bring these cars out, whether they're street machines, hot rods, customs, or movie cars that we create, which become stars. This is what makes the world. I don't care what categories. It could be tuner cars, race cars, anything you want to call. That's our world, the wonderful world of automobiles. Truly one of the biggest attention getters on the plaza was Daniel Galvez's 1966 Chevy Impala Lowrider. It's a 1966 Chevy Impala two-door hardtop. It gets a lot of attention from policemen on the beat to hot rodders to people who don't appreciate lowriders in general, and that's basically why I did it also. The creativity on this one was maybe 90% me and a lot of friends. Definitely honored to be here uh, that McGuire's would ask me to come. The reward is the smile on people's face, you know, at the end of the day. This particular award really fulfills uh, what the hobby needs to get the recognition out for the people who really inspire us all. Like Steve Earle getting the award this evening, you know, the historic races and all the old vintage cars, and they just resurrected everything. And Barry Maguire recognized that and kind of actually um, put it in a time capsule, if you will, so that now we can all share it for years to come. Barry typifies an enthusiast. He gives back so much to the industry in a different way than we do, either in publishing or people who build cars. You figure that these guys are, are making these cars different because they want to make a statement. And he showcases that through his TV shows, through his advertising. He is at every event. I, I go to an event in Florida, I turn around, there's Barry McGuire and there's McGuire's 18 wheel. John Pangling then brought a shining example of a tuner car of the European persuasion. It's a 2000 BMW 323i. Basically, I built this car to showcase, you know, uh, the rims, the shop I work at, DTM Auto House, because we specialize in the European cars and, you know, the accessories and parts and things like that, as well as build a show car, you know, that, you know, that's able to win awards and you know, get some attention out there. I just feel blessed just to be out here. You know, I want to thank McGuire's, especially for inviting me out here. It's an honor. Stay tuned for more of the 2003 McGuire's Award when McGuire's Car Crazy returns. Welcome back to McGuire's Car Crazy. So Chuck, just how car crazy are you? I'm so crazy, I've got three garages on my property, and I'm gonna build a fourth. Look at my car, I just put all my money into the car. Everything goes into that car. So I'm car crazy. Car craziest. Tom, would you consider yourself car crazy? <laughs> well, McGuire's did a thing on me, and they said I was car crazy, so <laughs> I don't know. I never thought I was, but uh, that's all I've ever done since I was 12 years old, so maybe I am. If you can imagine a young guy in high school taking a 1927T, tearing it all apart in his parents' living room, putting a flathead V8 in it, putting it all back together, and going out to the dry lakes, that's pretty car crazy. <laughs> I'm so car crazy that I publish eight car magazines when there's already a flood of them on the market. Blindingly obsessed, beyond belief, to the point where I can't sleep at night just thinking about cars. That's how car crazy I am. Would you consider yourself car crazy? 
Oh yeah, real crazy. <laughs> Good car crazy, that's for sure, still today. I was going to a swap meet and it was pouring rain and I realized that aside from being with my wife and daughter, there's nothing I would rather do in my life than paw through piles of rusty parts. Is that crazy or what? What's the car craziest thing you ever did? <laughs> well, two things, the cannonball, running the cannonball, and we did, uh, Ennis Ireland, George Drolson, Dick, Dick Starita, and I did a, uh, the one lap of America in a $39 a day unlimited mileage Lincoln town car. That was probably the craziest thing. I'm definitely car crazy. I'm insane. <laughs> when I went to name my daughter, of course, I needed her initials to be something to do with cars. So she was Sonia Sophia Kasky, so that she's an SSK, just like a Mercedes. Top of the line, just uh, like mom. Yes, yeah, that's so, see, you know when you name your children after cars that you got it bad. Too crazy to put that much money in a car. <laughs> I am really car crazy, and I have been all my life. I had a little 29 Ford, and I've loved it, and here I still am. I'm just nuts about cars. Well, let me put it to you like this. Uh, I don't smoke, I don't drink, but I love cars. Just how car crazy are you? And I think after 21 books, it's insanity. It's not crazy. I'm gone totally cra cra wacko. Well, I'm car crazy enough to own 40 Porsches. In fact, I've been eyeing that beautiful 917 sitting up here on the podium. What's the car craziest thing you ever did? Car crazy? Oh, Barry, now you're putting me on the spot. Probably starting Carlisle. I guess it was the craziest and best thing we've ever done. I love cars, and I love it all the way through. And even with my Corvettes now, it's fantastic. I'm a car crazy guy. I tell you how car crazy I am. I just got out of the hospital two hours ago, and here I am. Four wheels and an engine, I am car crazy. <laughs> oh, man, am I car crazy? Do I have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the night, hon. I love you. You too. <laughs> You don't want to miss all the festivities of the 9th Annual McGuire's Award honoring Steve Earle as the Collector Car Hobbies Person of the Year. With America's band, the Beach Boys, helping us celebrate this incredible evening. Coming soon on Car Crazy, right here on Speed. Car Crazy has been brought to you by the McGuire's family of appearance car care products. McGuire's, the trusted experts in surface care since 1901.